In this lesson, we will look at two examples of solving cubic equations by using the technique of factor by grouping. For the first example, we are given x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18 equals 0. Because there are no like terms on the left side and we have four terms, the recommended technique is factor by grouping. To begin, we divide the polynomial on the left in half, meaning we have the first two terms and then the second two terms. Next, we factor out the greatest common factor from the first half and then the second half, and we should have a common binomial factor. The greatest common factor of x cubed plus 2x squared is x squared, so we factor out x squared. We're left with the factor of x plus 2. And we can check this by distributing x squared. Notice how we still have x cubed plus 2x squared. And now we factor out the greatest common factor of negative 9x minus 18. The greatest common factor is 9, but because we want a common binomial factor of x plus 2, we factor out negative 9, not positive 9. If we factor out negative 9 from negative 9x minus 18, we're left with a factor of x plus 2, which again we can check by distributing negative 9. We do still have negative 9x minus 18. Next, notice how we do have a common binomial factor of x plus 2, so now we factor out x plus 2 from these two products. Factoring out x plus 2, we have a factor of x plus 2, and the second factor is x squared minus 9. And this product is still equal to 0. Now we're not done factoring here. Notice how x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares. So we have a factor of x plus 2, and then factoring the difference of squares, x squared minus 9, we have a factor of x plus 3, and a factor of x minus 3. And now we can use the zero product property to finish solving. The product on the left is equal to zero when x plus two is equal to zero or when x plus three is equal to zero or when x minus three is equal to zero. Solving x plus two equals zero, we subtract two on both sides, which gives us x equals negative two. Solving x plus three equals zero, we subtract three on both sides, which gives us x equals negative three. And finally, solving x minus 3 equals 0, we add 3 to both sides, which gives us x equals positive 3. So the given cubic equation has three real rational solutions. Let's take a look at a second example. Here we have x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 15 equals 0. Again, we don't have any like terms on the left side, and because we have four terms on the left side, we will try factoring using factor by grouping. So we divide the left side in half, meaning we have the first two terms and then the second two terms. Next, we factor out the greatest common factor from both halves. The greatest common factor of x cubed minus 5x squared is x squared. Factoring out x squared, we're left with a factor of x minus 5. Next, we factor out the greatest common factor from negative 3x plus 15. The greatest common factor is 3, but because we want a factor of x minus 5, we will factor out negative 3, not positive 3. Factoring out negative 3 does leave us with a factor of x minus 5. And again, we can check this by distributing negative 3. We do have negative 3x plus 15. The next step is to factor out the common binomial factor of x minus 5. So we have the quantity x minus 5, leaving us with a factor of x squared minus 3. Notice this time, x squared minus 3 does not factor because we don't have a difference of squares. But we can still use the zero product property to continue solving. The product on the left is equal to 0 when x minus 5 is equal to 0 or when x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. To solve x minus 5 equals 0, we add 5 to both sides, which gives us x equals positive 5. Now to solve x squared minus 3 equals 0, we will have to use the square root property. So we first isolate x squared by adding 3 to both sides, which gives us x squared equals 3. And now to undo the squaring and solve for x, we take the square root of both sides of the equation. And remember, we do have two solutions here, and therefore we include a plus or minus on the right. The square root of x squared is equal to x. And on the right side, we have plus or minus the square root of 3. 
So we do have three solutions here. We have x equals five or x equals positive square root three or x equals negative square root three. So we have one real rational solution and two real irrational solutions. I hope you found this helpful.